Hello and welcome to the channel Gaming Like a Noob. I'm the noob and I call myself Sansomi. Now I haven't played this save since May and um, the last episode as you then know um, was recorded in May and it is now um, the 11th of September. I'm recording, uh, uh, finally recording a new video for this series and um, a lot has happened to Manchester United. Uh, Solskjaer is gone, um, uh, Ten Hag has taken over, I, I think Solskjaer was gone way before that by the way, it was Rangnick that uh, had the job in May so yeah. But we have Eric Ten Hag in, in, um, in charge, we started the season extremely bad uh, against Brighton and against Brentford and then we had a couple of good games Liverpool Arsenal and uh, I think Leicester was involved there as well uh, now when it comes to the I think the only surprise win there actually was the win against Arsenal because Liverpool has had a tough start of the season um, now, I don't want them to win, of course, but I do hope for Klopp's sake that uh, they get better um, because I really like Klopp. I think he's a good manager and I hate for him to get fired. Um, he was actually one of the managers I wanted uh, way back when Ferguson um, ended his career. I wanted Klopp to take over Manchester United there, but... Yeah, we didn't get him. Um, now, Eric Ten Hag, it, I think it's too early to say um, if it's a good or bad decision, of course. Um, but I do think, and I do hope that he will be making United great again. Now, we don't have Eric Ten Hag taking command of Manchester United in this save. We have me, Sansomi Trollbeard, having control of Manchester United. We have started this season quite well, actually. Uh, we have lost in the Carabao Cup, which we don't like, of course. And we have a Premier League lost against uh, Manchester City, which was the last game that we played, or the previous game. And we have a draw against Leicester there, 1-1. Other than that, we have straight winnings, and we have played... Quite well, and I'm hoping for a win against Bayern uh, in the Champions League here. We have started quite well in the Champions League as well. Club Bruges 3-0 three, three and Porto 2-1, so two good winnings. And uh, hopefully we can get a third one against Bayern. And then we have two league games. We have uh, Sheffield United and Brentford to play as well. Both home games, which is uh, interesting and nice. Uh, Kylian Mbappe have started things off really good for us, so um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go uh, talk too much. I think we're going to go into the game and see who we're going to play today. Uh, they have, they want me to do a lot of changes, and I'm, I'm pretty certain that I'll have to do a couple of changes because I think the players are quite tired after the game against. City, well, a couple of them are. Uh, losing sharpness and losing sharpness here. That's not good. But uh, what's going on here? Let's have that as the first one. And I think it was shift. To ha no, that's already in the second one. That's good. Uh, so this is, uh, of course, the lineup here. And you can see fitness problem with Van Binsaka. I haven't found a really good right defender, I think, um, to take that position. Um, so I don't really know. Now, left defender, Diego Dalot. He's not happy, but he is. Uh, there's no fitness problem with him. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I will move Dalot over to the right side and take in. Luke Shaw. Now there's injury problems with Luke Shaw. Blimey, blimey, blimey. So we don't have a left defender. We have Ethan Laird. 
Should we get Laird, give Gil Laird the opportunity to play? But he's not fully fit either. He's quite tired as well. Well, we do have... Maybe we can have it like that. And then we have Binsaka to come in for Laird uh, later on. Now, I want to keep on uh, Delight and uh, Varane because I think they've done good, even if they are tired. Um, so I'm not going to change those players. And uh, looking at the midfield, we have Chan Sancho, Pogba, Bruno and Kylian Mbappe. Mbappe really needing a rest, which is not very good. Um Let's see, we have Ericsson on the bench, we have Casey, um, we don't have a... Now Ericsson, it says here that he can play as an attacking midfielder on the left, but I don't think he can play a left midfielder. So who do we have to be able to play as a left midfielder? Uh, Elanga, I don't really like Elanga, I don't think he's good enough. Hannibal, oh, they're tired as well. So, um, I don't think we're going to have any other choice than to play with Mbappe and hope that he will be able to manage his fitness so that he can be uh, there. Now, Rashford. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep him on. I think I'm going to play this team, actually, and hope for a good result against Bayern Munich. Well, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, we all know um, that. Let's go to... We're going to have this team. Uh, or is there anybody that we want to change on the bench? Uh, we could have Jesse Lingard to actually be on the bench to take the position of Mbappe if things go good or bad. Uh, who do we want to bring out of the game then? Cavani. I think I'm going to lose Cavani in this game. And give Jesse Linga the opportunity to come in and take that position of Kylian Mbappe. If we, if things goes good or bad. If it's an even game, I want to play Mbappe as long as possible. But if we take the lead with 2 or 3 nil. I'll take him out, and if we go down two or three, I'll take him out. So, yeah, let's hope for a good result here. Um, I'm just going to do something. I'm going to be prepared to turn off the sound that I have outside here. I'm just going to have... Let's see here, yeah. I'm just going to see to it that I have sound on. I do, and then I turn off the sound here because I know that it will be recorded um, anyway. So, always mark tightly on on uh, Lewandowski. That will be a good thing. And I want to pump my fist. And let's see if we can't make things happen in this game. So, here's Bayern's lineup. They have a good side. And um, that's going to be a problem. Um, but... Uh, Here's our side, and we have some good players as well. Um, I'm not going to say no to that. I miss Cristiano Ronaldo. We have a good start in the Champions League, six point. So, uh, yeah, here we go. The game is about to start. Let's see what we can do here. Bayern against Manchester United. And um, not much happening here in the first 10 minutes just moving along so um, I guess I would be happy with a goalless draw of course away turf against uh, one of the best teams in Europe or in the world that is or Rashford Sancho gets it into Adeyemi Karim Adeyemi 1-0 Manchester United on away turf at Bayern that is a brilliant start after 15 minutes but it's going to be checked by it's been disallowed. For what? Was he offside? I don't think he was offside. Yeah, he was at that past moment. Blimey, blimey, blimey. That was not good. Oh, that's... It's a sad part about the new way because it, it's... 
way harder to share for a goal now. You you often stop sharing or you often wait to share for the VRR. And oh, good challenge by Mbappe. And it, it takes a bit out of the, the excitement because you always want to gel when that goal comes when you score and then the disappointment when it's disallowed by VAR and and uh, I think it's a, a a bigger disappointment when it's uh, disallowed by um, VAR and than it is when it's disallowed by by the referee as it was before uh, as Sané they are playing good here now Bayern we need to get rid of them from our side of the pitch here. Now, the, the, I think the reason why the VAR is so um, disappointing is that it takes a long time. You have to wait a long time, and then the disappointment comes when you when the wait is over there. Uh, but when it was the judges that directly they gave the decision quite directly, so. If anything, they went out to talk about to the to the linesman, and then it was over. Now they're gonna have to check the video for a couple of times to make sure that it's really, really, really offside, or really, really, really not offside. So it, it takes a bit out of the 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 thing imaging. So let's go out there and make a, a great second half. It's, it's see. A goal is draw so far, so I don't want to take out Mbappe because I think he can still be that thing that puts us... Oh, crap! Leroy Sané has scored for Bayern. Wasn't what we wanted, but it was what we got. That's sad. Sancho needs to, to, to be taken out as well. He's very tired as well. And Varane... And Laird, I think I'm going to start with Laird and put in um, Van Binsaka there. I don't have much choice on the right side, I can see. I think, I think we really need to try and find a right defender to be to be competitive in that position. Um, well, that's not going to be easy to find a right defender. And to... Be, oh! I think that the biggest problem, of course, is not to find a good right defender. It is, of course, to find the money to buy the right, a good, a really good right defender. Um, but yeah, oh, good, Mbappe, Dalot. Oh, now it's hoist up. Oh, nothing. We are not getting the opportunities that we need to, so let's see if we can find somebody to play for. We only have this. Yeah, we're going to do like this, and we're going to do like that. Now we have done all our changes, I think. No, we have no more changes to do. There's still only three changes here, and we're going to lose this game, unfortunately. Oh, we can't create anything with those players on the pitch. No. So we lose 1-0. Two 1-0 losses in a row. First City and then Bayern. Um, that's not good. It's a sad thing. And uh, uh, wasn't your day. Um, I think that's the best reaction I can think of because... We didn't. We 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 played good, especially in the first half. I think we we created that offside goal and stuff like that. But uh, we didn't play good enough. So Bayern taking over the first position, and we can actually fall down if Porto win their game. Or no, maybe we can't because I think um, we beaten Porto, so they can't surpass us. But on the other hand, Porto has beaten has beaten Bayern, so they should be above Bayern then. So I don't know. Maybe it is going to be a goal difference, and then they have to score. They have to win with at least 3-0 to get to our goal difference. So, yeah, we're going to have to say about that. So um, I'm just going to say that um, see you in the next game. And so we're here. Time for a game at home against Sheffield United. They are... They're just having wolves underneath them. 
So it's a really important game to win. And we're just going to have to see what players we can use in this game. Um, it's going to be, they want us to change a whole lot of players. I don't know. We're going to have to get into this to see. And it's, again, again, with this being out of order, I don't know why, but irritating. Um, yeah, like... I could do a couple of changes uh, for sure, uh, but nobody seems to be tired anymore, so that's a good thing. Um, Luke Shaw is back in full training, but should only be given 45 minutes at most. So I think I'm going to be putting back Fan Bin Saka, and then I'm going to take Luke Shaw and put him in Ethan Laird's position there, first of all. Now, what else? You can see here we can use a whole lot more um, substitutes. And um, is there anybody I would like to... Garnacho is something that in real life has a lot better numbers than this, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, he really should be given the opportunity to play. I don't know if he's in the under-23. I think I need to make sure that he's available for the under. He is good because they need to get their their minutes every week in, to, in order to be um, developing, so to speak. Uh, otherwise, they won't do that. This is the new. He's only twenty-two, so he needs to play. Uh, does he? Is he sat to the? This is a lot of thing that I, I sort of know. He's not in the under 23, so should I perhaps use him? Um, I think I'm going to give him the opportunity to this game and rest um, a, a defender. Uh, let's see, who do we rest? I think we're going to rest Varan. So Varan out of the game. Delit and Kamara playing, and I guess. Um, Anel will come in into the game. Luke Shaw, hopefully playing second half. And I'm thinking Casey taking the position of Pogba this game. And should we put in Ericsson for Bruno Fernandes? We need to get them uh, games so that they can... Um, yeah. So that they can uh, develop. Um I really would love to play Chesko as well, but I think I'm going to bring him on in the second half as well. Cavani, I don't really care. He's so old that it's a good player to have on the bench, but I don't want to bring him... I don't necessarily need to give him the minutes to develop because he's not going to develop. Let's say, face that fact. Uh, it's better to put in perhaps uh, Diallo in that case. So, uh, yeah, um, I mean, to be honest, if I have the time, um, I would have loved to make a series where I actually control everything, where I decide um, the lineup in the first team, the lineup in the under-23, and the lineup in the under-18, and control every game of them, uh, because... To, to to actually see to it that every player that needs to develop gets to play every week, whether it's in the senior club or in the first team or in the under-23 team or in the under-18 team. The important thing is that they get at least a 20-minute time of playing every single week. So I would really have loved to, to, um, to do that, but... I, I, I can never find that amount of time. Uh, so we're just going to have to settle for me taking care of this senior club uh, team and hope, hopefully the, the under-23 and under-18 will use the right players to play so that they develop. I know that it's important that I play Shesko as much as possible so that he develops. So if nothing unexpected, if no injuries happens 
I think it will be, or if somebody gets really tired, so I need to change them instead. I think it's going to be Anel, um, and Chesco, and Luke Shaw that will come in in the second half, and that will be it. Hopefully, we we will have a good lead by that time. That's a right defender. I wonder if he can become anything. Not valued a lot. Seven hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds. But his contract is running out in two years, so he really should have. If he was good, he really should have a higher value. So I guess he's not that good. But I'm going to try him someday. But it's not going to be today. Even if this would have been a good game to put him in, uh, since we it is the uh, a team that is not supposed to be able to challenge us, even when we're using substitutes. So. Um, yeah, show on to weaker foot, we can do that. I just don't want to to, to do do it when it, they say that we should go in hard and tackles in somebody. Uh, I don't, I hate getting red cards. Uh, so let's pump our fist here. Make sure we win here. We need to put some pressure on them. They can't just go out there and, and think that they, um, it's going to be easy for them. They need to know that they need to win games if they want to continue to play in this team and 10 minutes in and nothing has happened it seems um very boring game so far so let's see what um oh already 25 minutes and not not even a chance that's uh, disturbing we do have five shots and two on goals but that's all that's very dis oh and here they come don't let them score here, or Deloitte taking that away. Here's Rashford, trying to find Adeyemi, but Egan is there taking it, and he passes to Delot. and Delot to Mbappe, Mbappe finds, oh, Sancho! Oh, little more power on that one, and it will come in. Here's Ericsson with the corner, he floats it in, Egan, Getting it away, and here they come. Sheffield United in a counter-attack. Good from Binsaka. Kese, come on, get a control of the goal ball here now. And we need to get up and, and create chances. Look at the, the, the numbers on our players. We are not playing good. And there's loads of players that are not playing good, and it's not the, the really bad players that are playing bad. It's the good players like Rashford, 6.7. Adayemi, 6.6. .6. Ericsson is good. Casey is good. Sancho should be a lot better. So we wanted to take in. We're going to give him 45 minutes. I'm going to do all, the, all three changes here. I know it's a big, big, big risk to take to do, the, to do this. Watch which were the third player that I was thinking about. Let's have a look at the subs. Ah, yes, that's right. And Kamara hasn't been that great, so Anel will take the pitch here now. And let's... We can't chase anymore, can we? No, we have done all three. So let's get on to the dressing room. Let's pump our fist. Keep working hard and it will come. Three changes in United. Let's hope that there are good changes and that they will make us better. Here's Ericsson with the free kick. Has an L. Gets it to delete. And he's in trouble there. But an L coming out to help him. And here's Kisa. And gets it to an back to an L. An L is still up in the yeah attacking side of things here in the penalty area is Shaw with the corner gets it into Shesko good effort though finally getting something that we can show here here's Shaw here's Alajemi back to Shaw gets it to Ericsson with a heel and there's Shesko again oh god 
Ericsson, Shaw, gets it in, and there's Shesko again, and there is Sancho! That's just got to be a goal. That just has to be a goal. Come on, not, no disallowed thingamajing here. Come on, awarded! Yes, 1-0 United. We have gotten that goal that is so important. The first goal, but Chesco has been playing well, I think. He's been creating a lot of chances, been there. Uh, not been able to put it really into the net, but uh, been creating chances. And, and um, so, yeah, I think he's been playing good. Anel has been played, played well as well, so... Let's hope that we can at least keep this 1-0. I would love to score a couple of more goals, of course, but the important thing is always the three-point. Here's Mbappe. Weird pass from Ericsson. Here's Adeyemi! Oh! Now, Sheffield United's defence has been good. Here's Ericsson's corner. And Egan headed that away. What a shame. And uh, so it goes on. 1-0. It's, it's, it's a nervous lead, of course, to have 1-0. Um, it's, it's, it, it only takes one good opportunity to, to change that. Um, we don't want that to, ch to be happening, but um, it's so easy to happen. Here's Anel, Mbappe, Anel, Delete. To Arnel, to Ericsson, and finding Chesco, Chesco to Kise, to Ericsson, back to Chesco, to Sancho, and here's Adajemi through. Can he score? Oh, he hits the post! He hits the post! Dang it! Dang it! Here they come, Sheffield United. Stop them, please, lads. Please don't let them score. Don't give them a penalty either. That's a bit... Oh, no! Ooh. Yes, thank you. Oh, that was so close. That... Oh, I was really scared there. Chesco, you need to be fighting for those balls. You can't let them come like this. Good, good. Sancho. Trying to find Chesco, but Chesco is not quick enough there. Sheffield United is taking over the game, and I have no changes to do. I could change in the way they play, but I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. I want to keep my way of playing here. and uh, But it's getting nervously here. I don't want them to equalise. We need the three points. To stay cl stay clear at the top of the table, um, because this is, I say, I have spent quite a lot of money. We had a good season last season where we actually lost the the the, the, the league in the very last game, and uh, not because we didn't win, but because Liverpool didn't lose. If Liverpool have lost in the last game of the season against Wolves, we would have won the league, but. Yeah, so I want to make a, a better effort this year, and I actually want to win the league, of course. And uh, we need the three points, and it seems like we're going to get the three points. Perfect. I mean, it's not a perfect game. Um, only scoring once against uh, Sheffield United, way down there. Uh, but at least they didn't score on their chances, which is good. And I'm going to give them some positive feedback there. And we didn't get anybody injured, um, which was a, a good thing. I was worried about Luke Shaw coming in in the second half, playing his 45 minutes. And uh, I was worried he was going to get injured there. But that's all for this game. Let's uh, meet up in the last game of this episode. And so we're here. Last game of this of this episode. I, I was all, I almost said last game of the season, but of course it's not. We're only we're only played eight games so far. Um, we're top of the table, which is good. But uh, we need to keep continue to win, of course, especially games like this against Brentford here now. Um, 
Uh, so uh, let's just get on with it, I guess. Oh, crackers. I think I started too early then to talk. Well, I can talk about some things other than the game then. Like uh, the the accus accusation from Bailey, for example, on Solskjaer that he was uh, not uh, wanting... He always uh, gave English player the choice to play. I think my view on that is that he probably did by the orders of the Glazers, uh, which make him a, a weak manager if you can't control, uh, be the one that is in de taking the decisions, then you are the weak manager, of course. But um, I don't think that they did it, uh, he did it himself, so to speak, because I don't think he would be that um, ignorant. Uh, I, I think he wants to win, and uh, so, yeah, I don't think that that was the reason. Um, but, yeah, you never know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it probably more depending on... on uh, the Glazers having paid 80 millions for, for Maguire and didn't want him to be on the bench. So that's a good thing that, that, uh, and I actually think that, um, that that pressure got to, um, get to Ten Hag in the beginning as well. And, um, and that's why he played. Uh, but after that, he's taken out um, McGuire and, and start, uh, things have gotten better. Now, I, I'm feeling a bit sad that Cristiano Ronaldo is another one that is getting the ax quite often. Um, it doesn't suit me, to be honest, because I really like Cristiano Ronaldo. Even if I, I didn't really like him uh, at the start, to be honest, when he came, his first time in Manchester United, the first, um, what should I say, the first um, going around, the first time he was uh, in United, so to speak, um, I didn't really like uh, Cristiano Ronaldo because I've always been on the, the fact that I want... Um, I want players to to not simulate um, things, and uh, to be honest, he did throw himself quite easily um, back in the days. So, yeah, I didn't I didn't really like Cristiano Ronaldo, and I'm not saying that he stands on his feet 100% um, of the time today either. But I think he's gotten better. With that, he doesn't throw himself to the ground as easy, even if he's he still throws himself to the ground. Don't get me wrong there, that's for sure. But uh, I think he's he's not as he he's not the, in that sense that he is um, like that um, every single time now that he I didn't as I said I didn't like it when he I've always loved British football because of the things that they that they didn't throw themselves to the ground um, like Michael Owen in the World Cup of of 98 where the Colombian player brings him down in the penalty area and he just gets up again and he then gets a, a, a gets in trouble with Glenn Hoddle uh, because Den Hoddle said you have to stay down in those situations because that would have given us uh, a penalty. And uh, yeah, sure, it would have, but it's not the British way of playing football. Uh, it has become now. And, and it's also, for me, um, yeah, I can do that. It has also, for me, giving a sort of thing that I don't really... Uh, enjoy the game as much as I did back in the 80s and 90s and and, and start of 2000 
Uh, so, yeah. Let's see what we can do in this game and and try to keep our focus on the game here instead of what is happening in real life. So let's see here. I guess you could see I was I, I took a chance on Mark Gerardo in this game. Um, we'll probably put in um, Luke Shaw after the first. How oh, Mbappe! You need to score in those opportunities. I will probably put in um, Luke Shaw in the second half and put uh, Dalot on the right side instead. But I want him to, to get the feel of the first team as well, Gerardo, and see if he can be something. This was a good pass. And uh, there is Shishko! Hoo, 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 hoo. And... Mark Gerardo was actually a part of that. He was a, it was an important part. We can have a look at here in the replay. Here's Gerardo and giving that smooth, good pass to Lingard. And Lingard then gets it into Chesco. And the, if there was to be an offside on this one, it would have been Gerardo's, but it wasn't. Um, Lingard did stay behind there. Ericsson with the... Oh! <clears throat> so close for a Shesko to get a second goal in this game. But it wouldn't was not to be. Not at this moment anyway. And we played so and so and I think giving um Chesco a complete forward situation and in, in the supporting but still playing as a supporting uh, attacker seems to have helped him a bit because he's played very well in this game. Here's Adeyemi on, on the run, and he is quick, and he goes through, and he scores! <coughs> I'm so sorry for coughing. I am getting better from a, a, a cold that I have had for quite some time now. <coughs> but when I speak a lot and, and like this, the throat is really getting sore. So I'm going to take some cough medicine before I... Like that. Hopefully that will keep the cough away until this episode is over anyway. Here's Shesko trying to reach Ariemi. Ericsson trying to reach Ariemi. And here he is. He's through. And he... Oh! He almost scores number three there. So 2-0. I'm pretty pretty pleased with how the glides have played in this game. Ericsson. Uh, interesting to see that Pogba and Ericsson lining up. And uh, yeah. This looks good, and uh, it seems like we have a good second um, lineup that can really do some damage here. A lot better than we were in the. We're going to know where we can definitely get it. Another gear, of course, we can get into another gear. Now, Gerardo is getting tired, but he's been playing very well, actually. So, so, uh, but I'm going to have to take him out now. So we, but we're going to do that in tactics. I'm going to pause the game so we don't miss anything. So we're going to change the position of those two and then take in Luke Shaw. So, yeah. James Garner, he really should be given the opportunity as well to develop. He's going down in everything at the moment because he probably ain't playing. Um, but at the moment, I'm going to keep it like this. And uh, later on, I think I'm going to try and get James Garner in when I feel that it's secure to do that. Let's confirm the changes. So Delot now playing as a right defender. And we will have Luke Shaw as a left. Well, after the first dead balls, that is. Because we're, they're not changed so far. Delit, Jurado, Lingard, Jurado. Pogba, Pogba trying to find Adayemi. He finds Adayemi and Adayemi finds the goal! And it's 3-0 to Manchester United. This is marvellous, marvellous. Playing very well today. Good pass by Pogba there. And Adayemi just running away from everybody and puts it in behind the goalkeeper there. Very good. 
and uh, yeah I think we've uh, we don't need to have tight offside no it wasn't very tight don't give me that here we go we were still gonna do the changes and uh, yeah I've been very pleased and very I don't think I'm going to be using him against Manchester City and Liverpool and, and the top teams, but I think I'm I'm going to be since we we do have problems getting uh, players to to with the fitness and everything. I, I guess Gerardo has actually put himself in the line for for an opportunity to get to play anyway. Um, have an average rating of seven in this game is of course brilliant from him. Uh, and here's Adayemi. Oh, that could have been a good strike. Now, I'm very pleased with the way we have played today. And 3 0 now. I think I'm going to be giving Pogba the rest. He's been playing very good, though. And bring in Gardner there. Maybe even uh, take him here. I take. Ericsson out and giving Fernandez the opportunity to get back into shape because he's not very happy at the moment. Um, but maybe here's Bruno Fernandez with the corner. Floats it in. Oh, is that a penalty? Shesuke's indicated referee. He was pushed. Let's the VAR take a look at that. We don't have any Cristiano Ronaldo to to. To, to, to take the penalty, but we do have Karim Adeyemi, and he scores! Another goal for Manchester United, and it's 4-0 against Brentford, and that's exactly the number that Brentford beat Manchester United in real life. That's actually kind of ironic, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, if we don't score anymore, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that very ironic, that we beat Brentford with five, uh, with, sorry, four nil, um, knowing that that we lost not so long ago against Brentford with four nil. So, yeah, uh, good. I think I'm. Uh, it's a sad thing that I'm not as good a manager in real life because I really would have loved to take over Manchester United, but I do know that this is a game and a game where you have, where it is. A lot easier to be a manager in this game than in real life. There's a lot of things that that you have to be able to be good at um, when it comes to real life uh, and stuff like that. Um, but I, I think it's like it is with everything, with every person that you really meet. I think it's very important that you treat the person after their personality and that means that if you're going to be a manager for a team to get the best out of every player you have to get to know every player uh, and you have to know that if is this a player that I can scream and and shout and 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 um and in that way get the best out of him or is this a player that I sort of like like Ferguson uh, there have been a lot of talks but with Ferguson coming out coming into the dressing room after the first half and a couple of players that they couldn't that he couldn't he knew he couldn't scream at them because they would be broken then and then they he could come into the dressing room and Paul Scholes could have made a perfectly good first half but he starts to yell at Paul Scholes and complaining about him and stuff like that and getting really angry and that had an effect on those players that he couldn't directly yell at that 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 wasn't capable of handling those um that kind of of uh, treatment so it's very important i think as a manager to get to know i think it's in every working situation i think um the best bosses um that you get is the person that knows how to handle every single person from from their personality some of the people needs to be yelled out a little bit to yelled at to do something to become better others you have to treat um good uh, you know in the sense that you you have to um talk talk to them in another 
kind of way. Uh, um, um, I think everybody needs to hear their strength before you complain about them. That that's I'm 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 a hundred percent in on that. Um, but yeah, I, I think. I think that's very important. I think that's a, a part that could be um, the har hardest part about being a manager, I think. Um, I think it's the hardest part for any um, buddy who who has control over other people that, I mean, that are uh, bosses out in the working place and stuff like that. The harder thing, I think, is to find a way to treat treat every person in a way that doesn't um, get the people to feel that they are being treated, uh, mistreated, or being treated in another way than any of the others, but still that they have to treat the person to get the best out of the person. And some needs to get rice, while other needs to get roses to perform at their best and that that is is sort of the harder thing to find out which people needs to to be treated in which way so yeah now now we end this season with all oh, this episode sorry seeing season again it is not a season ending it is an episode ending and uh, it looks like we're going to be keeping our job so far uh, looks good, and um, I'm not afraid uh, this time around. I think we have played very well. I mean, we have one draw against Leicester, and we have a loss against Manchester City, which means that we are not uh, that dominant that we can face off against Manchester City in that way. Now, the, the really weird part about this, remember... How Liverpool dominated last season. They're having huge problems. Four winnings, one draw and four losses. And yeah. Hey, wait a minute. 3-1 wasn't... That is exactly the result that, that uh, United got against Liverpool when we met them in this reel thingamajing and that was a turnaround well what do you know strange things has happened anyway that's all for this episode i guess having a look at the finances we have 52 million in our transfer budget uh, transfers we do have a couple of coming in some young players all of them are very very young 17 16 16 15 now this one is the one that is actually the youngest player, Andrew Harper uh, from Glenoven, is the one joining us uh, at the new year. 1st of January, this little young lad here going to join us. Hope he can become something great. And after that, we actually have the goalkeeper from Australia, but he is not Australian, he is English. So he will, and he was, he's not going to be any problem getting into the country, so to speak. And then we have these 16 year old, this is a Turkish midfielder, and this one is a Colombian um, attacking midfielder, right? Which is going to be interesting to see what they can become. Um, um, the scouts have said that he has a great potential, or a very good potential, and the same, I think, I know this one I haven't scouted. I don't know why I just, I mean, kind of high determination, I guess that's what I aimed for when I took the, kind of got, got a lot of, I mean, 17, 16, and a lot of yellows, so I guess that's one thing, but I think I'm going to scout him, actually, a uh, scout player. Just to find out more about him. Um, this one has not a great potential, but he has some good potential. So um, I guess I could. Uh, he can be something. Um, and this one as well, not a great, but a good. And, and even if they're not great, they can perhaps make us money, uh, develop them into as good as they can be. 
and then sell them for a couple of millions. I mean, this one, he's going to cost us two million pounds, which is a lot of money. That's true. But maybe we can develop him into a Premier League goalkeeper, um, even if he's just going to be playing for some bottom team in the Premier League. He, he still would make uh, quite a lot of money if he gets to the quality of a Premier League goalkeeper. So, And these are all cheap ones. Uh, 40,000, 77,000 are very cheap ones. And this one, 425. It's not about that expensive, especially when we, as we played with Manchester United. Um, and, and the last thing I think I'm going to be showing before we end this episode is, of course, this player that we have tried and tried and tried to sign. Uh, and not let's see if we can have another color like this and perhaps get a better view of the value here it looks a little it's it's views a little better in this color here but he's worth around 300 million and that's no money that we can throw up on him we're not going to pay that kind of money but his contract expires 24 so he's only got two more seasons to play in Dortmund unless he signs a new contract with them so maybe that can be putting some pressure on them to sell him for something around 100 million the next uh, year. So, so next uh, time, uh, well, in for the summer, then he's only going to have one year left on his contract then. So but I think we've had an OK, um, an OK episode. Uh, the loss against Bayern was, of course, the sad part. Uh, the struggle against Sheffield United was real and we we were a bit lucky to get away with the 1-0 victory there. They did create some chances and we didn't really create a lot of chances against Sheffield United. But Brentford game was a superb display from my players. Very happy that Mark R Gerardo made a good effort in the game as well. Um, so maybe there is some potential there. And the next episode, um, if there is no postponements and, and or any, what should we call it, um, cup games going being thrown into these situations, we're going to have Nottingham Forest, Leeds United in the league, and then we're going to face off against Bayern again at home this time against uh, in the Champions League. So... And we don't want to lose that game because we know how important that game is to actually um, win. So Porto could only manage a draw against Brugge. So no worries about who's going to be ending up in which position at the moment. But it's it's tied to get with us with the three of us: Bayern, United, and Porto. And um, so we we need, of course, to play better than we have done and we need to get us a, a, a wrestles against Bayern and uh, yeah but that's all for this episode I hope you have enjoyed it please do subscribe I would be very happy about that and uh, like the video if you did enjoy this time with me and uh, all there is for me to say is just bye 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 bye